Welcome back to Moons of Madness. Last episode, we worked our way up to the living area at the control area. <laughs> I don't know what these places are called. You know, the place with all the satellites and communication array stuff. Where Declan is supposed to be. Of course, we've just come inside. Called for Declan. They don't seem to be here. At least I didn't immediately respond. Pretty sure they're dead or turned into some horrible monster or just absorbed into some fleshy blob somewhere. You know, let's look around and find out exactly what happened to them. Ah, I needed a power cell to uh, use the elevator up to the, like, can we see it out here? Nah, it's in a different direction. To the top of the big satellite. So I guess I could use that for it, but let's take a look around before I take that and leave. This place. Josie was right. Jesus, I didn't know it was like this. How does he live like this? Hmm. Oops. Hmm. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Spice fruit cereal, my favorite. single shoe. Dual monitor setup. Nice. Maybe Declan was a streamer from Mars. That's what Declan looks like. Hold on. What do we look like? I guess we both just look like generic dudes, don't we? <clears throat> Daily log, entry 361. Slight fluctuation in array rotation during calibration. Diagnostics for self-clean systems require filter replacement. Slight dip in power to non-critical systems due to solar array. Generator power at 94.7. EVA to recent rock slide at heavy transport elevator 2B. Estimate to clear and assess approximately two days. 839. Something is... Uh, emergency protocol. Something is wrong with the dish. Circuit box shorted. No prior warning. Just sparks flying mid-transmission. Yeah, there was a sandstorm, but we've never seen a blackout like that. Circuits fried while I'm sitting here. Had to manually reboot the backup generators slash servers, which should have automatically engaged. I don't know. New to do, I guess. Temporarily reroute circuit boxes. Run a bio-gauge scan. Manually calibrate satellite dish. Where's Shane? a draft of a memo about recent communications outage. All personnel, due to a recent sandstorm, a servo malfunction caused site-wide communications to be down for several hours. Backup servers have been activated and will function as the new primary communication network, though it has significantly reduced intensity and radius. Chief Engineer Shane Newart has been informed of the damage and will be tasked with circuitry repairs. Until then, expect intermittent comms interruptions while the network is re-established. Thank you for your understanding. Recent comms log. Uh, wait, what the hell is this? Is this all encoded? Yeah, this is... At a glance, it looks like nonsense. It's gotta be encoded. Huh. Note for Shane. Shane, where are you? If you see this, we're headed back to base. We waited, but you were nowhere. I'm with Josie and Lucas, and we're taking the rover back. We lose... Um, we lose contact for a second, your rover coordinates disappear, and suddenly the satellite goes nuts. I don't know if it was the freak sandstorm or what. Doesn't matter. 
Get back to base. Contact us. Whatever you can do. I just hope you see this. Wait, the rover? The one I took here? We lose contact for a second, your rover coordinates disappear, and suddenly the satellite goes nuts. What the hell happened? Did this... Did this, like, just happen? When they said take the rover back, did they mean the one that I just came from? Like, if I go back down there, it's gone now? This is bad. I'm sorry, Declan. I didn't know how bad it was. He can't stay alone out here anymore. He needs help. Declan, right of your fantastic adventures. Dad. Dad gave this to me. We had this little 12 by 10 by 10 case of personal effects that we could seal up before launch. And I almost left this behind, but it helps to write sometimes. Not sure why lying bothers me so much. My dad, my sister, they still think I'm freezing my ass off for climate studies in Antarctica. I don't know about fantastic adventures, father dearest, but last night I dreamed I was on one of those celebrity dance shows, and my partner was Catherine Hepburn, and we won, even though she was obviously dead. But it was great. Then I woke up. Wrote down numbers from space for six hours and drilled a tiny hole into 17 rocks, all while being a single reinforced pane of glass away from death. It's a real roller coaster here on Mars. Must be the Gaelic side of me coming out. I've been building cairns. I used to do a lot of hiking. I get annoyed by the little rock piles people would build along the trails, as if to say, I was here, I've developed fine motor skills, look at me! But the bonus of hiking on Mars is the leave no trace ethos is kind of optional on a completely deserted wasteland. During EVAs I've started to just take a moment, grab a few loose pieces and build a cairn. My little zen garden, balancing the rocks, it felt nice. Lately, though, I see the rocks moving. I tested my theory, although in the fuck-all, most limited, unscientific way. I'd make a new stack with the finest Martian rock samples I could find, pristine dusty rocks, and then I'd wait a day. They wouldn't fall over, no, that'd be too simple. One stack would have a single rock swapped. Not an easy rock like the top piece, but a centerpiece. One centerpiece swapped from this stack to the other. No glove marks. Nothing. Just two shitty Martian rocks that I swear changed places in the middle of the night. Why am I writing this? When a person is drowning, their throat seizes up, preventing water from entering their lungs, but also air. The reflex is so strong, you could be floating there with your mouth well above the water's surface, unable to cough, unable to breathe. You don't drown because you're underwater. You drown because of yourself. Sticking a needle in the webbing between your toes it sounds so horrific, like your natural reflexes would kick in, but it's the reverse. The emotions dive, the depression slams you with a singular focus, your mind starts justifying it all, releasing a hint of those chemicals. You're pretty much a tiny little voice trying to control this monstrosity. It's nearly impossible. And so, this natural reflex to hurt yourself so terribly and specifically becomes everything. So you drown in it. Jesus Christ, my hand is shaking. I think I'll sleep at base tonight. Gotta get out of here for a bit. I haven't been sleeping well. Understatement. Sometimes I can't tell when I'm awake or dreaming. 
the numbers keep coming, the messages start to make sense. Spending time at the base doesn't help. It's a hassle trying to come up with reasons why I need a rover ride every day. Just a bit of casual hallucinations, everyone. Nothing to worry about. If you could pick me up before the flashbacks start at around 6 in the evening, that'd be swell. Maybe I'll build another cairn, let the witch move the rocks around. Fun pastime. Wish I had a beach chair and a margarita. Might as well enjoy my descent into insanity. I saw the witch today. I'm still shaking. Looked out the window, and my sister is standing on the cliffside. My sister. She was stark naked out in the nothing of Mars, choking, eyes bulging out of her head like a goldfish fallen out of the bowl. Nearly killed myself throwing my suit on. I get out there. I run, stumbling around to the barriers. Instead, there's a person with a paleness to her, deep black hair, and she's facing away, looking out over the endless dunes. When she turns to look at me, it is not my sister. A deep black hole where a face might be, a gray slit curled into a smile. I feel and taste granules of sand pouring into my open mouth, and suddenly I can't breathe. She slowly draws near as I slam my fist on my chest, trying to breathe. Tendrils of blackness reach out from that endless void in her skull. I'm sinking into the desert. She's trying to pull me under. And I wake up grasping for air. I don't lose it like this. I just don't. Fuck this. I love how much character I felt coming through those journal entries. Like, we don't know much about Declan, and we've never actually met them in person, just spoken with them over the radio. But from what we've heard of them, I know a little bit about their personality and how they're really sarcastic and have a dark sense of humor. And I could feel that really coming through in their journal. And I love that. It's just good characterization, even if the horror stuff that they're writing about is a bit cheesy. Really good characterization. <laughs> Solitaire. Alright, let's take this and leave. Oxygen's fine. I love the detail about uh, the rocks that are moving are being swapped out of the middle of cairns. Like, that just doesn't make much sense. The top ones, okay, maybe, but like the middle ones? What the hell? That makes it so much creepier. Because I have some vague memory of hearing about there being a mystery at some place in the world, the real world, uh, where rocks were observed to move slowly over time. People weren't sure why for a while, and I think it was finally discovered to have something to do with like freezing and thawing cycles, slowly moving rocks over time. But... That obviously isn't what's happening here, if the middle rocks are being swapped out and nothing else. That is so much creepier. Looking down. Which moon is that? Whoa, what is that? Holy shit! Uh. Oh my god, please just be a meteor. Oh my god. Was that the spaceship that was supposed to come today? I forgot the name of it. Uh oh. I'm 
gonna do a full circle around here because that's the sort of person I am. Also, look at that view. My god, that's beautiful. Look at those gentle little waves of sand. A little bit scared about what I'm going to find in here. Store power to the dish. Okay, no bodies. That's good. Um. That looks like blood coming out of... I don't know what that is. It doesn't really look like a cup. Looks like blood coming out of something. And fucking hell if I know what that is, but it looks like a cloth with a bunch of teeth in them. Hmm. I don't think those are space snacks. I just want to slam all these controls. I want to move these. I want to move these sliders up and down and just touch the keyboard and spin the dials. Ah, burning plastic. Definitely a short in the system. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have some sort of power routing thing. I noticed these. I need to find a way to reroute power around the damaged nodes. Oh boy. Spiderweb series circuit box. Mm, rotate or just cancel. Okay, so I can just move around and left click on stuff. Ah. I just had to connect both ends together, I guess, was it? This panel distributes power between the dish and the PC terminal. And that busted node means I can only power one of them at a time. Ah, I see. The dish and the PC terminal. Well, I guess I want the PC terminal first, I suppose? Like, I don't think I could do anything with the dish if the PC terminal isn't working, right? I don't know what that is, but it's super cool looking. Yeah, that's like the, I don't know, the gearbox or whatever for the dish for moving it around, I think. Massive. It'd have to be incredibly powerful to move something that big and heavy. Uh, so let's get the PC up and going. Of course, I don't actually know which one is the PC, so I guess I'll just do one and see which it is. How does this, so this these things can't be turned, but they also don't seem to uh, connect anything. So are they just dead? Maybe I gotta go down here. Probably gotta go this way, I think, yeah. Oh! So, what is that? The PC! Checking if the others are started up as well, these things. It's just the same as before, just kind of blank. Log entries. Eight note. 
Shane goes missing. Lose contact with the Serrano. Oh, um, the Serrano is the spaceship that I think we saw explode. Don't know if that was a spaceship, but I'm pretty sure. Then the circuit boxes start going haywire. Pull just enough power to turn the dish to Josie and get some sort of signal. And then it all just resets. What a beautiful day on Mars. Reminder. Sure, Orochi will find out I'm breaking encryption rules, but I can never remember the constantly changing code schedule. Code name, or Glorious Leaders, Chatterbox, Com Relay Satellite, Contact Base, Roostand, Serrano, Marble, where Antarctica is. I think the conversation log that we saw that was just a bunch of numbers was a conversation between Codenamed and Roostand, which is our Glorious Leaders and the Serrano. Um, how is it encrypted, though, exactly? Whatever it is, it's something simpler than Orochi wanted them to use for encrypting the transmissions. So it's probably something I can figure out. It's getting really bad out there. Whoa. The pace, <laughs> uh. Calibration manual. Uh, let's not do that yet. File generated over 15 minutes. B -b -b code name, marble, chatterbox, roast on. Oh, that's... That's the coordinates. The last known coordinates of these things. That's important. Calibration must be performed manually via BioGage after security authorization via ID badge. Due to the potentially compromising aspects of calibration and outgoing signals, access to calibration routines is limited to engineering staff. After initial calibration is achieved, the Angelus Communications Array utilizes automated routines to maintain calibration. Note that if the targeted signal cannot be followed, for example due to going under the horizon, the Angelus will need to be manually calibrated when the signal is available. General signal quality should be maintained at or above 85% at all times. Lower signal quality may result in interruption of service. For Orochi security protocols, calibration information may not be stored in any form, encrypted or otherwise. Great. I guess I'm going to have to set it to these different coordinates, but I'm not going to be able to view these coordinates if I give power to the satellite, because then there won't be power on the PC, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a picture of this. Wait, I can't connect to that? Huh. Oh, it was this one. Okay, power to the other one. Um, I think it's got to go this. Yeah, there we go. That was easy. No PC. No power. Wait. Oh. Now I need to deal with further ones, don't I? This one. This circuit box is amping up the current. Too much power will fry the system. Too little, and the dish won't work. It feels very silly that this sort of a puzzle is in the game. <laughs> but nonetheless, I will do it. Mm, so this is 9 over on the right, so that's the final power. That's what the final power needs to be. Starts at 3. Needs to be 9. Ah, oh, this should do it, I think. We're going through 3 here, 1 here, and then I think I can go through this 2 down to here, and then it'll be 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus the 3 should be 9. Uh... There we go. Sandstorm is picking up again. Things just keep getting worse. Okay, now it's up. It converts raw solar power to sustainable energy within various types of electrical power cells. If a designated cell is missing, remove power cell from a non-crucial system and insert into machine. Uh, 
Uh, communication module for the Angelus data for security reasons for record signals are encrypted. Okay. T to use radio. Select radio item, exit radio. Broadcast. Hello? So calibrate it and then use the radio to try to test whether there's anybody receiving there. Commander Wilcox. Dr. Volkova. Dr. Van Buren. Is it just a matter of... Oh, it's just a matter of getting the percentage to the right level? I don't actually need to enter in any coordinates? Okay. Seventy-seven? Is that enough? Come on, someone respond, please. What the fuck am I hearing? Nothing ever seems to work right. I'm hearing a really distorted, disturbing signal. Uh, yeah, I think the coordinates are actually important. The coordinates, well, they're not really coordinates. The values that we saw on the com coordinates are for pitch and yaw. These things here, so I should try all four of them. Codename, Marble, Chatterbox, and Roastond. So let's try Codename first. That one is 140, 140 Yaw and 61 Pitch. I think that's the one we just tried and it, we weren't able to get it. 61. Hello! Still not working. Yeah, that's not good enough. Let's try Marble. That's 1278. 12. Wait, 12. 12 on the... 12 on the yaw? Does it go that low? Oh, the thing spins around so you can see more values. 1278. Oh, this thing has a lot of momentum because it's very, very large. I like that I can feel the weight and how it controls. 1278, so this one should be 12. Ooh. Promising. Very promising. Commander Wilcox. Dr. Volkova. Dr. Van Buren. Okay. Let's try Chatterbox. Minus 158. Forty-three minus one fifty-eight. Forty-three. Forty-three. Yeah, forty-three. Doesn't quite reach a hundred, but ninety-nine will do, I think. Someone respond, please. All hands on deck situation. Crash landed. Oh my god. Commander Wilcox, where are you? Something. Newhart? Do you copy? There is a creature roaming Trailblazer Alpha. Do not return to base. Repeat, do not. I can't hear you. You're cutting out. We are at base. We need to investigate the Cyrano crash site. No, 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 no. Commander Wilcox! Single Wilcox! Please contact a qualified 
Yeah, that was Serrano. 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 Serrano pepper. I don't know. <laughs> Should I take this with me? Ah, I can't. Bad things are going to be out here, I just know it. Not even static, but they're alive. Someone is alive. Beings from dust. Oh, that was cool, the way the text is like blowing in the wind and then blew away. 